So in my previous auto body video, I was showing you how to fill a pretty ugly looking gash that we got here in this, in this bumper. Uh, I, I filled it, bumper's hollow, so I, I did some interior filling and then some auto body filling and some priming and some wet sanding. And I had to call it quits there because you need to let primer off gas for a while. I've left it plenty long now. It's been about two weeks since I've done this. And now I'm ready to apply the color and the clear coat. So phase two, I'm gonna be showing you about wet sanding and buffing and making it look as, as good as possible, but we need to apply some paint first. Now, uh, the surface here is pretty perfect. There's a few little flaws. I think they might end up showing through in the end. We'll have to see, uh, but it's certainly good enough. This is a backyard, uh, a driveway repair job. And to affix this bumper properly, was going to cost a thousand dollars i'm going to get this fixed in less than three hours and it's going to look very good nobody's going to notice anything so it's a good deal um, now one thing before i get going uh, this is color matched to this particular van this is a 2004 toyota sienna phantom gray is the color if you look at the sticker i'll show you that in a second you'll see this number here one e3 that's the color code and that's what you need to know in order to get the right kind of paint. Now, this paint, like a lot of paints on modern vehicles, is what's called a metallic color. And that means there are little reflective flecks in suspension in the paint. And it's to make the paint look more interesting. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, you should be able to see what I'm talking about here. Yeah, you can see it quite easily here. You can, you can see all those little glitters. That's what metallic paint is all about. And it, and it makes makes the vehicle look nice. It also makes it harder to match the paint because depending on how the little flecks settle when we apply the paint, there could be some difference. So it's, it's, it's quite challenging to match, perfectly match um, a metallic touch-up job to a regular, uh, to, to a vehicle, since we're not doing the whole vehicle. But we're gonna, we're gonna meet the challenge. And um, before I get spraying, let me show you what a paint code looks like and where you might find that sticker. So uh, paint codes, uh, they can be kind of obscure, but they're usually found on this uh, sticker here. Let me swing around, Robert, and just show that, that sticker. You mean that those stickers inside vehicle doors actually mean something? They mean a lot. So this shows all about the vehicle, and then you see that there, C slash TR color slash trim so 1e3 that's the color code now how did i know that there's a lot of other numbers and things here uh, well i didn't actually at first i thought that might be right because of the c slash tr and then when i went to my paint supplier i confirmed that this color of gray according to them has this paint code so you can see it here so it's I'm confirmed on that. It's uh, it's as close as I can get to the factory coloring. Now, uh, where do you find this color matched paint with the corresponding color code? I got this online. Um, I'm a Canadian. I had to bring it in from the States. It was pretty expensive. But uh, Canadian Tire has a very wide selection of color matched paints. Other bits do as well. It's not that hard to find. And this kind of paint, almost all new vehicles, use a system of color coating followed by clear coating. And that's a necessary step. So it's a two part deal. And uh, that's what we're gonna do now, put some of this color on. As with the primer, I'm gonna have little specks of paint. I can't mask the extent of the painted area because that's gonna leave a little ridge. So I'm just gonna kinda let it fuzz out and it's gonna be rough and, and kind of ugly where it fuzzes out to nothing. But that'll be dealt with with the clear coating. Now, the main problem, the main danger here is that I put too much on and it starts to run. And that looks especially bad because this is a metallic paint color and it shows up even worse. Another thing, very important, never to change direction with a spray can while you're still spraying. So you want to go and then stop and then and then stop and then stop. Now is that so it doesn't get too thick on the ends? Otherwise you'll stop, you're still spraying. Before you, by the time you turn around and go back, you'll have too much, and it'll be running down. So 
what I want to achieve here is enough paint that the, the atomized particles of paint can flow together, but not so much that it runs. So, and I don't want to do too little. I don't want to just dust it. There has to be enough, enough paint particles there to flow, but not too much. So, uh, and a lighter coat is better than a heavier coat. So, let's just start here gingerly. You can already tell this is making it look so much better. Now, you know what? I'm going to stop. I want this to, to firm up a little bit. Working with a spray can like this, I mean, it's not a spray gun. It's not a precision spray gun. And you see how little bits of paint get onto the nozzle? And when that happens, I can get little spatters, which you can see here. It's not a huge deal. Like I said, it's the back of a bumper. Um, this is going to be more than good enough. But next time I do this, I'm going to make sure my, my nozzle is dry. And I press this thing down firmly each time. No little dribbles. I think want full pressure. I'm going to let it sit for about five minutes. It's not nearly enough paint, but I don't want any runs. So let it dry a little bit, and then we'll put on some more paint. So I've got several coats of the color on there. I'm pretty pleased with it. Like I said, it's not absolutely perfect, and there's still a few dings and, and things. It is a 15-year-old vehicle, after all. Um, but now I'm going to put on some clear coat, two or three coats of that. Then it's going to have to dry for about a week before we do the wet sanding and the buffing that will bring it right up. So once again, not too many, not, not too thick, but uh, thick enough that it flows together. So at this stage, uh, the color and the clear coat has been on. It's it's been on for you know three or four days now, and it looks pretty good. It's certainly a lot better than it was, and I could just leave it like this um, because visually, you know, it's it's a pretty good match. The, the paint is actually very very slightly darker, I think, than the stock paint. But stock paint is 15 years old, so I don't suppose we're going to get a perfect match. But I do want to re refine this a little bit more because even though you can't see it. When you rub your hand on it, it's not perfectly smooth. In here, there are dust bumps, so little things that landed on the paint when it was still wet. Out here in the, the periphery, here and here and here, there are uh, particles of paint and clear coat that didn't really pool with their neighbors, so it's kind of more finely dirty over there, rough over there. So the process of refining this comes down to abrasion, and it's a series of progressively finer abrasive steps, uh, the first of which will happen with some water. Uh, I'm going to use some 400 grit wet dry paper here. I don't, it's going to make this duller than it is now, uh, but I'm not concerned about that because I'll bring the buff back up later on. But it will knock off these little bumps and it will get rid of this fuzziness on the periphery. Um, so it's kind of like what you saw me did, did before, what you saw me do before with the primer. And um, it's just a matter of wetting it and starting to sand it. So you definitely do want to do this when it's wet and only after the paint and clear coat has, has completely dried. Uh, not just dry to the touch because it's still off gassing at that stage, but uh, you, you would just want to let it go for a number of days beyond uh, dry to the touch. Now, I'm not doing a you whole learned bunch that one the hard way, I think. Yeah, a lot of lessons I've learned the hard way. Stuff like this tends to bubble in strange ways if you do it too soon, even if it feels very dry. Exactly. Now, can you see the slurry that's forming here? That's just what I want to see. It's perfect. And I'm going to the to the extent now. That's way smoother. That that feels 
really good, but it wouldn't be particularly shiny when it dries. It looks nice and shiny now. If, if it stayed this way, I would just walk away and our job would be done. But it's going to get a little bit dull when it dries. And so we want to make it just as shiny as the rest of the car. So I'll do a little bit more of this 400. Um, I'll make sure that I've gotten all the rough stuff off and then we'll progress through to the next steps. Just going to continue the process. This is 1500 and then I'm going to do 2000 and then we're going to do something completely different. This will uh, even out the gloss and, and help to bring it back. But we're not going to get shiny until I actually start buffing, which is kind of fun and uh, really makes quite a difference. Uh, as you'll see in a few minutes. But I'm just gonna go over the same thing. Here, lots of water. Oh, there's a little little speck of gravel there. You wanna watch for things like that. I'm up here in the edge. And uh, I'm feeling a little bit of, there's another gravel stone there. They can leave quite a scratch. So you wanna make sure that everything's as clean as possible. As I mentioned before, I think this whole repair, I'm going to get in way under three hours. It's, it's taken me some time because you have to let the, the paint dry and fully off gas. And I am explaining this to you as I go, but uh, three hours you could get this whole job done from start to finish. So it's quite a saving. I'm under the 2000 now. It's almost no abrasion there at all. It doesn't really feel rough. You could use computer paper if you want. Well, if it had an abrasion rating on it, maybe I could. I've let the bumper dry completely because when it's wet, it looks great. You don't see any, any issues at all. It feels perfectly smooth. Just based on my fingers, I would say it's ready to go to buffing now and bring it up to a, a gloss. but. If you look closely with the, the light on a certain angle, you can see a kind of a mottled appearance. Can you see that, Robert? Yeah, can I can. That's caused by the fact that the I haven't I haven't wet sanded enough. So I've removed material on the high spots on the peaks, but the peaks are still preventing me from abrading the valleys. So the valleys are still shiny, as it was originally, and. The peaks are a little duller. So the buffing that I'm going to do might take care of this. I'm not sure. I'm going to do a little more sanding with some 2000 grit, and then we'll go to the buffing. But this is what an under sanded repair looks like. And uh, there's not a whole lot of abrasion happening at the buffing stage. So we need to be able to, uh, to have things look pretty good now, too. So the wet sanding is all done. There's no, no more of that modeling. It's now a nice, uh, even, dull sheen. And I'm going to go to the buffing. And for that, I, I'm using a woodworking sander. This is my trusty 6-inch angle grinder style sander, random orbit sander. And normally it spins this. This is a Velcro disc. You know, it's for sanding wood. Uh, but it, it threads on, and it's meant to uh, easily swap out different things. Uh, this is a, a sponge buffing pad that threads onto this sander. You can see in here, I had to grind off a little spot in the housing in order to get the wrench in. I think that the sander must have come with a wrench originally that was really thin. Um, I bought this thing, I don't know, 25 years ago. So the wrench is long gone, but a 14 millimeter wrench, thin profile, fits in nicely when you just grind away a little bit of the housing. So... I could do this by hand, but it's a lot faster by machine, and it's a lot more thorough. So my first step is to just wet this a little bit. It's going to get a lot wetter than this when we get going. And apply some rubbing compound. So this is the first step. It might get us shiny enough. If not, I have another bottle just like this. It's even finer, and it's called finishing polish. But let's try some of this. And... Uh, you just kind of squirt it on. Looks like hand lotion, but it actually has an abrasive component to it. Now, let me warn you about something. 
if I just start this up right now, it's going to start spinning around like crazy, and it's going to cover me and this stuff, and you, Robert, and the camera and everything. So I want to make contact before I turn it on. I also don't want to have it on full blast, at least not yet. So variable speed, number six is the fastest. I'm going to put it down to maybe two. That's probably slower than I need, but I want to start slow because I don't want to have a big mess. So put it on. I'm going to give it a little bit more speed. Not a whole lot. Now I'm also not going to lift it off. If I lifted it off right now, I'm also going to get covered in stuff too. So moderate pressure. Get back and forth. I'm going to put on a little bit more. It takes a while to saturate the pad so that it's working properly, but this actually, too, is a great way to improve the, the finish on an older vehicle, just to go over the whole vehicle like this. Makes it look like a new one. New vehicle. Let's wash it off and see what it looks like. As before, you've really got to let it dry to see what what you've got. It just it looks so nice wet, but it also hides all the imperfections. So. Feels good, feels smooth. Um, you can see a pretty nice sheen there. Can you see that? The reflection. Yeah. I'll let this dry. We may be done. I'll know in about five minutes or so. So this one buffing with the rubbing compound was sufficient. Um, in, in fact, the section I've been working on actually looks better than the rest of the bumper. So I think I might just buff the whole area and, uh, and, and feather the repaired area into the regular bumper uh, a little more soundly. But... Uh, Bottom line is that you can do some pretty amazing body work right in your driveway without any special equipment. You can save a lot of money, and uh, and there's the proof. So I hope this has proved worthwhile to you. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, subscribe. Uh, give me a like if you've liked this video. Uh, check out the description box in the video because you'll find my website address, and you can sign up for my weekly Saturday morning newsletter, too. More than 28,000 people get it every week, and they love it, and I think you will, too. Thanks.